So last week I showed you how to get the film look using your smartphone filmmaking app like Filmic Pro and it also applies to things like MC Pro 24 FPS on Android which a lot of you spoke about as well and gave it high reviews too. But today I'm going to show you what accessories you need for smartphone filmmaking to give you that film look. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it and I'm going to show you exactly how to get the film look and what accessories you need to do that. Now there are a number of tripods out there, different types that will give you great shots for different situations. The first one is a simple mini tripod like this. So you've got simple three steady legs. This is a Movo tripod, really good one that I got in a kit that I reviewed recently. Really, really nice kit. And it's got a ball head as well, so you can unlock it, move the head around. So no matter where you put the tripod, you can actually straighten it out with the ball head. Really, really helpful there. So if you get a mini tripod, that's a really good place to start. You can get nice still shots, you can get those nice low shots where someone's walking over the camera, that kind of thing. A mini tripod is a really good place to start. But there are other types as well. Octopus tripods are really, really helpful. This is one that I've used probably more than any other tripod I've had so far, apart from my tall one that I've got using for this shot now. This has a ball head as well, so you can maneuver it quite nicely and easily. And these legs here are completely flexible, so you can wrap them around bars, posts, anything, in any location you're in. This is a really, really helpful way to get shots literally anywhere, and it doesn't matter how bumpy the surface is that you're putting it on, you can get really, really nice shots with this. So a octopus tripod is also a tripod that would be really great for a smartphone film to give you unusual angles and shots, which will make it look more professional as well, rather than just having the same shots the whole way through. Now, not everyone's going to have a nice high budget to get the best tripods in the world. There are other options like this, which I have on Amazon. This clamp is actually bought separately, but the tripod itself is really, really cheap. You get nice extendable legs, but do remember, if you buy cheap, you're probably going to end up buying it again. So, if you extend it, extend that once I unlock it, this leg is actually broken, so it won't extend anymore. So, if you buy something cheap, just be aware that it's probably cheap for a reason. It's worth getting a little bit more money onto the tripod, spending something a little bit more and getting something that's going to last because otherwise you're just going to end up buying again and again and again if you keep getting cheap stuff. And in the long run, you'll probably end up saving money than buying something cheap. This does give you an option though when you're starting out, so I do recommend these if you're just starting out on a low budget. Um, they can be very, very helpful and it can extend quite a bit as well. So this is the tripod that I use regularly for all my films. It's a super, super tall tripod. This can get up to about six feet. I'm six feet myself, so to get something really tall so I could film myself in films was really important. This cost about £70 on Amazon. This is the Niwa tripod. Really, really great piece of kit. That's a foam handle there, so you can hold it really nice and tight. You've got really strong clip extendable legs. As I say, it can get really, really tall. You can then extend it through this middle pole. You've got this for nice tilts and pans. This is something people don't often think about, is that with tripods, yes, it's great for getting still shots, because I do think they're really underrated still shots. But also just getting a simple pan and tilt, the pan handles on these are so smooth on this particular Newell one as well. I really recommend getting these because there's nothing quite like a nice simple tilt and pan on your shots. And that brings me on to number two in my list of accessories that will help you get the film look on your smartphone. The trusty hand rig. Now this is the Ulanzi U-Rig Pro, one of the chief accessories that I own and one of the ones that I use the most. It costs about £18 on Amazon. Really, really, really highly recommend getting yourself a cheap handheld rig. Whether you're starting out or not, these are really, really useful. You've got thread so you can add lights, microphones, all that kind of stuff, which is really, really helpful. A simple twist on the clamp that allows you to put any kind of phone on there. It's also really good if you're in a bit of a run and gun situation where you don't have the time to be setting up tripods back and forth, back and forth, and you're really against the timer. This, you can just put in your hands and move around really quick, set it up, all done in about a minute really really quick really great piece of kit to use because quite a few different makes of these rigs as well so choose which one you think suits you best there's ones that are metal there's like b-script pro uh, rig which you can put your phone into which a lot of people use for their lenses as well things like that which uh, have been used on professional films as well for feature films and such and this one you can easily use on anything as well great to get started really worth getting get yourself a handheld rig Number three on the list is ND filters. You really, really need to get yourself ND filters if you want to film outdoors and get that film look on your smartphone film. I'm not gonna do a huge part about these because I've got videos specifically about ND filters, but essentially these, as everyone knows, if you, you know, experience smartphone filmmaking, are sunglasses for your camera lens. So when you're filming outside, you're able to stop a certain amount of light coming into your lens, which then allows you to bring your shutter speed down so you can then create the 180 of having 24 frames per second and doubling that with your 1 over 48 shutter speed. The reason that's important is because it gives you motion blur. At the moment, I don't really have any motion blur, 
because I don't have that shutter speed set, it's just a vlog this bit. But for films I always use 24 frames per second with 1 over 48 shutter speed. Lock them both so they're locked in safely and you're not going to get those changed during a shot. And I personally use fixed ND filters, these are Moondog Labs, um, because I just think they're a lot more reliable. I've seen lots and lots of videos on variable ND filters, some that are really good, but I just don't trust the X pattern that you can get when you're changing in between different stops and things like that. I'm sure there are really good ones out there, but for me, I personally stick with fixed ND filters, but you will need these to get yourself the film look. So a smartphone gimbal is pretty much one of the first things you'll hear about if you're getting into smartphone filmmaking to stabilise your footage, which one do you need, how much to spend, which one's great for accessories, lenses, that kind of thing that will have a really high payload. This is kind of a standard smartphone gimbal. This is the Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal by DJI. Obviously there's the OM4 now, you've got Zion Smooth 4, that kind of thing. Um, there's hybrid gimbals as well if you want to add loads of lenses and a rig, that kind of thing, to your gimbal. This is quite a basic one, but it will get you a lot of smooth footage. Now you can use this for really great ways. You can use it obviously as standard, facing forward, like this. You can also hold the trigger and then do kind of swooping motions with it, which is really, really great for going across the ground, that kind of thing, getting smooth shots uh, of someone's feet walking along, that type of shot. You've got the joystick as well, so you can move the gimbal side to side and do pans. This is actually really good. I used this for a uh, plant lady when I had a CCTV footage shot. I was literally just standing on the other side of a wall um, filming the actress and just making it look like it was a CCTV camera following her around with tilts and pans. Really, really simple, but it looked excellent in the film. I'm really, really happy with it. You can get really creative with shots on a gimbal and get shots that you wouldn't be able to get normally. You can do tracking shots as well if you want to do a bit of a, a torch kind of effect where you can push forward with it. You can attach it to a monopod as well. So if you've got a little thread here at the bottom, which you will do with your gimbal, you can attach it to a monopod, which I actually have built into the tripod that I'm using that I showed you with the big tripod that I have. That's also got a monopod in one of the legs. You can detach it and use it. Attach it to this, you can get really great crane shots, jib shots with a gimbal as well. Shots that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So I really would highly recommend getting some kind of gimbal for your smartphone. If you want to have lenses and quite big attachments to it, then you're likely going to want to get a much more heavy duty one than this, a hybrid gimbal, for example, that you'd use for DSLR type cameras that can take a lot more weight. But this is a really, really great gimbal to use uh, if you're not using too much weight on top of it. One of the most amazing smartphone filmmaking accessories that will help you get the film look is a diffusion filter. Now this is Moments Cinebloom diffusion filter. This is the 10%. See if I can get that closer to the camera there. So that's the 10%. And what they do is they basically soften your image. So a lot of people complain about smartphone films, how sharp the image is, it looks really technical and bit blech. But these really soften the image so beautifully. And with a 10% you get quite a subtle look. So I have the Moment Cinebloom Diffusion 10% filter on me right now. You'll see that the skin tone is slightly softer than what it was before without this. The colours behind me, like the fencing, all this kind of stuff, the greens as well, they'll be slightly desaturated because basically a diffusion filter it breaks the light as it comes through the lens. There's lots of tiny, tiny, tiny particles of glass in the filters. So it actually softens the light really, really well. And with the 10%, you get a really nice subtle look for all your films. I use this in all my short films now, 10%. The 20% is quite a lot stronger, even though it's only by 10%. So that's something I'd recommend using more for nighttime shots, but I'll show you what it looks like with the 20% in the daytime now. So this is a 20% Cinebloom diffusion filter by moment. As you can see, it desaturates your image quite a lot. The greens behind me, the browns that were quite bright and vibrant behind me will be a bit less saturated now, but they still look really fantastic and it gives you that bit of a dream quality feel as well. So if you want something that's a bit more stylized, perhaps for music videos, that kind of thing, or you just want to create something that feels a bit dreamlike, the 20% is really, really good for that. And at night time especially, it's really great for accentuating, you know, like extreme lighting situations as well, whether it's advertising, anything extravagant really. And if you haven't seen my video on the 20 versus 20%, Moments in Boom Diffusion Filters. I would check that out now. It's in that corner, I think. So diffusion filters are a massive part of my filmmaking and I think it should be part of yours too. One of the things that I can't understand why people don't talk about a lot more is lighting. It's really important in any filmmaking and especially smartphone filmmaking if you're filming interiors, for example. With my short film Plant Lady, I had only daylight that I was using for a lot of the shots. So it's also about how you use the available light you have as well as what lights you actually have to use. Uh, I used a fish tank light for a TV scene in it at night time, which is this guy. It's like a sort of almost blue LED type light for a fish tank, which I put in front of the TV to give that kind of nighttime 
TV flickery look and it works really quite well actually. Even if you've got one LED light like this, you can use this for numerous things as well. You can change the colour temperature on it so you can make sure that you've got either a cool light or daytime light. You can make it much much warmer as I'm winding it down now. It'll get a bit more sort of orangey glow, a bit more like a tungsten type of light there. So you can do anything with these. You can create just one little scene in a small room with one LED light and you can make something really fascinating. So think about what lights you have, what you have available to you. Do you have a desk lamp like I have used? Uh, I used a desk lamp in another shot. Plant Lady, I also used a desk lamp to light what is actually the poster and thumbnail for the shot, which I didn't think was going to turn out that great, but it actually worked really, really well. So just play around with the lights that you've got. If you're shooting outdoors, you can think about how you're going to use the sunlight as well. If the sunlight's really, really harsh, you can maybe do some shots under trees so you've got softer light, that kind of thing. Get a 5-in-1 reflector to use a diffuser on that as well. Put that over your act or your subject. Lighting is super important in smartphone filmmaking, so don't forget that. That is your bonus tip for today, one that people don't talk about too much, but it's really, really, really crucial to giving you that kind of film look. Builders outside, blimmin' builders. Optimus, Optimus tripod manoeuvre it quite nicely and easily. And these... So I know a lot of you will be thinking... So I know a lot of you think we don't have the time to uh, set up a to set. Let's take a look at the temp. Fusion filter. Now this is the now this is the ten percent diffusion filter. It's the moment cinnaboom. 